find out what it is. Right, looks like we got a package for today. Let's uh, let's open it up. <laughs> now, how am I going to do this with one hand? Maybe if I stick it <coughs> in there. There we go. I'm just going to cut it up here. Now, this was sent to me by a gentleman on the on Gumtree. Who, uh, who's a knife maker and uh, I'm pretty when I saw this I thought to myself wow that is that is rare to see um, so I'm pretty I'm pretty excited to open it up and see it in person if I can actually open it because Pretty much like everything, you know, I get. There's usually a lot of cardboard. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we've got a few more layers. What is this? It's like a it's like a cardboard tube and some newspaper. Okay. Let's uh, let's see if we can get that off. Probably film this sideways, you know. All right, changed angles. I keep forgetting that when I'm using a uh, using my phone to do a bit of quick filming, that I have to hold it uh, horizontally in landscape rather than in uh, rather than in portrait. Otherwise, it just looks crap. Anyway, looks like it's a big old. I thought it was a toilet tube, but no, no, it's actually a package tube, or a packing tube. Oh, see if we can pull it out. Oh, yep, here we go. Oh, that didn't look dodgy at all. Okay, sweet, new cardboard tube. Alright. Also, I'm... Uh, Apologise for the lack of updates. Recently, we've uh, we've been doing a lot of um, filming actually with a gentleman called uh, G Anderson. Uh, so we've got a lot of Bastoni and uh, uh, Baton and Jaeger stock uh, stuff coming up. But we did a whole weekend of filming, um, and as you might imagine, that takes <laughs> a lot of time to edit. All right, here we go. Got newspaper. We've got even more newspaper. Oh, what's that? Oh shit, that's sharp. Fuck. Why, yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it is a Neil Burbridge Bronze Age sword. Wow. Wow, look at that. Look at that grip. It's 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 staggering to see just how tiny the grips are. Like I've got small hands as you may have noticed, but this is absolutely this is ridiculously small. Like I can't even my entire hand wraps around the very hilt of that. Wow. Hang on, I'm going to get a ruler. Give me a second. Okay, we've got a good old straight ruler here. Where's the end? There it is. Oh, is that going to work? Oh, oh, sort of. Okay, so we've got about this 10 mil there. So we're looking at about, what is that? Looking at about 60, 63, 64 maybe, 65. I can't quite get it flat, so hang on. Let's see if that works. All right, so that's the end. Tracking along here to the tip. Yeah, about 63, 63 centimeters in total length. So it's definitely a short sword. Definitely a short sword. Um. As you can see, it is. Oh yeah, look at that! Look at the edge. 
Look at that, it's being pinged over with a secondary secondary bevel, I think that's what it's called. Look at that, and the, it's completely solid as well, no fuller. No fuller in that, the tip's obviously been refined. Looks like it's been sort of polished at one end. Holy moly. And that is like, it's not razor sharp, but that is definitely ready for an edge. Oh, come on, get in focus, you bastard. That is definitely ready. Oh, look at that. When I clean this up, it's going to be pretty, pretty nice. It's definitely going to be a very nice project. But that is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly heavy. Hang on, I'll see if I can get a point of balance without slashing my finger. So, so we're looking at about, so using one finger. So point of balance. Ah, my arms aren't long enough. Point of balance is about here, by the looks of it. So it's about there. Once if I move my hand up, yep, goes too far that way, goes too far that way. All right, so about a hand span or so up from the what would be the hilt on it. Total weight, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to. Um, oh, and the reason I'm filming this on my jacket is just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, I don't know whether this is Greek or a Celtic Latin style blade. I think it's a Latin style one just by virtue of this particular tang, but it could be a Jean. Look at that. Wow. That is going to be very, very, very cool. Look at that. Wow. I wonder how you'd use it. You can definitely do that. You definitely put your thumb on the back, but I don't think it's really intended for that. But holy... Oh. Squeeze that grip in there. You know, that is that is tiny. That is tiny. Look, look, my hand's actually... My hand is like spilling out, and that's like digging into my thing. And the pommel isn't on. There's no pommel on it. We're going to see if we can hilt this in... Uh, Maybe some hue and pine, if I can get some salvaged hue and pine, and uh, maybe a pommel of uh, serpentine. Um, so a nice stone pommel rather than a wooden one. So there you go. That's what arrived in the post. And now for the thicknesses at the hilt. Here we're looking at about 5 centimeters wide at the widest point at the hilt. At the narrowest point here, edge to edge, it goes down to about uh, four centimeters. At the widest point, at about here, uh, we're looking again at about. Actually, it's under four centimeters. Hmm, that's interesting. So it must come up, and this must be a wider point up here. Maybe let's see if we can find it. No, okay. Uh, so we're going from so we're going from five centimeters to about less than four, just under four, more or less slightly parallel, but there is a slight curve, uh, probably up to maybe four there, and then of course tapering to a tip. Here we have uh, about two and a half then subsequently all the way to less than a centimetre. At the tip, middle, the widest part of the grip here is about 2 point, what is that, about 2.4, gets as low as about 2 here, as low as about 2 there at the bottom of it. Tang, or what we might call the pommel flare, is about 4.5. That's interesting. And the tang... The pommel tang bit is about two centimeters there. That's very interesting. Very interesting proportions. Hmm. Taking it outside just so we have some natural liberal light rather than indoors. As you can see, still got that sort of 
cast finish down the bottom here, although of course the bottom has been uh, ground, obviously in preparation for a tang. Oopsie days, look at that, look at the difference between the cleaned bronze on the edge where the uh, where the peen has been put or where it's been sharpened versus the central one there's a bit of there's a look at that oh there's a bit of nice green rust there which won't do any damage as we know from bronze weapons it just you know it just gets a coating of green and then basically <laughs> stays that way forever you know totally fine absolutely no issue I wonder if I can set this camera up Try, try putting it on this table here. Oh. Does that work? Can you see it? Can you see the blade? Yeah, there we go. So I don't know. I'm just going to try this for a bit. See if you can see the blade. As you can see, it's really small. Look at look at how tiny that is. So that's that's the full extent of it. Look how small that grip is though. Look how tiny that is. Well, now you might be saying, oh, well it must obviously be, you know, a scaled down model or whatever, but as far as I'm aware with, with Neil and his work, they're all based on surviving examples. So, <laughs> you know, this is, this is as small as the grips were. Wow, that's fascinating. Obviously this is designed for a Y style one, which is pretty cool, rather than a um, rather than the bulb that you sometimes see where it just comes straight up and across. Although that's not to say you couldn't do it with this, but I suspect that this is not optimised for that. But Jesus, like, ah, it's actually cutting in. Like, if I grip this as hard as I possibly can, with as tight of a fist as I can, I can just get my hand. In. Obviously there's no counterbalance on it, there's no pommel, not even a hardwood pommel. Um, so it's just a it's just a thing but gee whiz, I can definitely wow. You know, that definitely feels like it's for cutting. I think uh Skullagrim has a video where he does some tests with a similar one, so that might be worth checking out. Uh, I'll see if I can find it, and if I do, I'll link it below. My God, that is that is cool. Definitely, definitely wants to cut. And obviously, it's a leaf, leaf shaped blade, which is optimized for cutting, mind you, because it's rock solid and overloid in, in cross section. You know, you could really stab with that. Definitely a nice descending one. You know, for some reason. I don't know, this might just be me. For some reason I feel compelled to, and I'm sure Roland would have something to say about gripping the sword a particular way. I can do it like that, right? But that's very much a hammer sort of style grip. I can kind of do the old handshake shift so I can keep it here. But the problem is this part digs into my hand, so I can definitely flick it to a handshake and it would be quite comfortable. But of course with a pommel, all of a sudden, you'd end up with it sticking out at this angle here. Which is, you know, which is interesting. So there you go, I can oh, stick it out like that. You know, so I can definitely cast, if you want to call it a cast blow. So, or I can, you know, boom, cut up. However, for some reason, and this might just be me, I feel as though... I can put my index finger along the back of it, like so, and grip it like this, so rather than having this on the outside, or the bottom most part of the tang on the outside of my hand, keeping it there, and really, you know, really, really sticking it in for a thrust, and it's definitely got some momentum behind it. Pow! You know, obviously you'd have your leather buckler, or rather your leather shield, central grip shield, um, or of course your big long Celtic style sort of rectangular or oval or coffin shaped or whatever, you know, so you're holding it either like this, boom, boom, okay, and of course 
coming around the other side, coming down over the top, you know, or alternatively here. So you can sort of do the old trapdoor sneak attack where you're like here, then rotate, boom, but you don't know where it's going. You know, Ooh, that was bad form. There we go. Of course, you could come around, so whack, you know, come up from underneath, whack, you know, come down from over the top, whack. So I could definitely see the utility of that, but if I was using a horizontal grip, you know, I could definitely see, you know, you flick it up, just like um, in my other video about the Imbracura, or Morozzo's horizontal grip shield, grabbing it like this, it's really quite static, but I could definitely get around it, as we see in a lot of vertical or longer elongated shields, doing, you know, punching in, punching in, and then sticking it around like that to bypass the other person's shield, totally, you know. This is kind of pointless, coming over the top might be doable, but of course then you're exposing the entirety of your upper arm to someone just counter-cutting. So doing that, maybe coming around from the other side, flipping it up, of course, so that your arm is horizontal with it, and coming up and going, boom, underneath, pow, like that. That would be pretty effective. Old McBain's ball thrust where you just come in and just go up like that, you know, jack that into the corner of the, the edge of your shield if it was horizontal grip, boom, up and under, lever it upwards, come up, boom, up and underneath. This is definitely up close and personal, this weapon, no doubt about it. Wind. Okay, so we're here in the front living room, and that's my messy room you can see in the back there. Um, but this is just to give you a quick look at the actual proportion of the bronze sword. So in the foreground here, as you can see, I'm holding it fully, of course, there we go. And it's inclined at about 45 degrees or so, and my arm is fully extended. Now, if I actually hold it upright, as you can see, so here my arm is at about, ah, uh, what is that? Yeah, my arm is about elbow length or forearm length away from my body. You know, it's pretty, pretty significant. And then as we move it backwards here, and I'm just trying to subtly cut my uh, room out, but I don't think that's going to happen. And if I hold it all the way back here, until my hand is in line with my chest here, so this is as close to my body as I can get it, as you can see, it's pretty not insignificant. You know, it's definitely not very long in the sense uh, that most people are familiar with a even an arming sword. You know, it's definitely sub, well, as we measured before, it's sub 90 centimetres. It's less than 80 centimetres, so it's even shorter than some uh, messer. But it is within the realms of, uh, say, a gladius. It's definitely within the realms of some uh, parrying daggers, barcelade, uh, a skein, um, and other, well, other, you know, quote, unquote, daggers, which are actually really just short swords. But I just thought I'd do that just so you guys can get a better look at the actual proportion of it. Not insignificant, definitely usable. So that was just a quick overview, guys. So until next time, catch you guys later. And he forgot to hit the button. After playing around with it for a little bit, um, I think that I'm gripping it incorrectly. So trying to fit the entirety of my hand in there, even though I can, it's probably not the best way to go about it. As you can see, even though I can do that, you know, the palm of my hand comes off the pommel there. The top of my hand continually pushes up against this. Um, even when it, it'll have a wooden finish on it, it's probably a bit rough. Instead, after a bit of playing with it, I think I'm going to go with Roland <laughs> on this. Good old Roland Warkeska. Um, namely that, again, I will concede that perhaps the pommel would actually have an effect, but that the shape of the grip, you'll notice that it fits very nicely within the fleshy bit of my thumb here. 
Can you see that, how it follows even the contour? And what seems to be the case with this is that if I grip it down quite firmly by the base here, I really lock my hand around, I can do a lot of, you know, I can do what I was doing earlier where, uh, of course, I can put my finger on the back of it and really shoot it forward, you know, pull it back, that kind of thing, without losing too much stability. But if I choose to grip it up here, sort of in more of a handshake grip kind of thing, look how snugly that fits in my hand. Look how nicely that fits just along the bottom here. So that is much more comfortable and really, really um, facilitates being able to whip it around much more comfortably and holding it at a point where your point is much further forward than it otherwise would be. Um, which is definitely an interesting idea, but when you, when you think about it, and we know this from other manuals, more, you know, Renaissance manuals, the less complex the grip, all right, you either have two options, keep your hand completely withdrawn and out of the way. So if we have a look in the old mirror over here, all right, if I can get that to focus. So either keep your hand out of the way behind the shield, okay, so if I had my shield, if my phone was my shield here, keeping my hand out of the way, all right, or alternatively, again, with this sort of handshake grip from earlier, so this kind of thing where the, the pommel is just nestled into the flesh of my thumb, if I actually flick it forward, so my, my thumb and finger is still there, all right, but now in order to attack my hand, you have to go past the point of my weapon, okay? So it's that compromise with a simple hilted weapon or a no hilted weapon point, really more towards the front so that subsequently you have to bypass this or hand completely withdrawn and out of the way obviously more than this so that you can't hit it um, of course naturally this was meant to be used with a shield almost exclusively used with a shield which of course then brings up other interesting questions of how they might have been used um, you know with, uh, with regards to this grip, because if I have a shield, I'm definitely, I definitely feel more comfortable having my hand much more extended, because then I can cover it, obviously I'm holding a phone, but I could cover it with a shield and subsequently cut around it, which again, isn't too hard to do with that grip. And it also means I can quite happily have my hand here and do push cuts, draw cuts, everything. So there you go. So after a little bit more playing around, I was wrong, you don't grab it, I suspect that it is possible, even though it's possible to grab it like this, I have small hands, if you're a normal sized person and you have normal sized man hands, you definitely want to make sure that that little crook here, okay, follows the line on the back of your thumb, rolls over like that, and nestles itself nice in there.